beautiful girls. Yeah. How old were they? Dana was nine, Laura was seven. They were killed instantly? Yes. Were they both in the back? No, Dana was in the front, Laura was in the back. Um, they did, I, I did hear somebody say that they tried to resuscitate Laura, but mm. Dana was killed instantly. Here they are, beautiful pictures. I think these, these were taken uh, very close to Just weeks this before. day. Yeah. Auntie San and my mother live in Lethbridge, and uh, so every summer the girls would go, when we moved, they would go and visit with Grandma and Auntie San, and Auntie San had just had a new camera. So she'd taken lots of pictures. God, we're not, precious pictures. We're not picture people, so. So was, thankful for yeah. even this. Mm -hmm. Well, God's provision. Provision, indeed. Amen. Um, Mark, terribly bashed up. Uh, not just physically, but badly hurt teen driver, inconsolable, after crash kills his sisters. There's nothing he could have done there. There was no fault uh, on his no. part, uh, but oh dear. Uh, the recovery, he, he was how long in hospital? Three months. Three months, Three months. and then a year at home pretty much? Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, recuperating for the whole family though. How do you, how did you handle this? I don't think we handled it. Uh, I know we didn't handle it. Uh, it was the prayers of people praying for us. There were literally, there were literally times that, that we, I myself felt the God holding us up, and it was because of the prayers that were being offered in regards to us. And uh, that was a powerful experience. Uh, now you'd had a word from God about trials ahead, but. Uh, were you not tempted to be bitter and angry? Two little angels gone. Mom? Um, the day, okay, the day after, they always say there's steps to grieving. My anger stage lasted for about 15 minutes to 20 minutes. And I was in the bedroom and I finally kind of yelled out and I said, God, this had better be your plan not the devil stole, stealing from us, but it had better be your plan. And I seemed to have a peace and we just went forward from there. But dull, uh, dull in ourselves, totally relying on God to help us. And like Patrick said, the, the prayers of other people, that is, that is so important. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're familiar with the poem Footprints. Yes, that Footprints in the Sand. It means so much to me because I know that we were being carried in the sand because we couldn't have done it by ourselves. What did this do for the faith of your children? I think it challenged every one of our faiths. Um, that's a, a good question. Uh, we were all severely tested. Yeah. And uh, what did it do for the faith of our children? I know, can you answer that? Well, oh yeah. <laughs> we have, we're a really close family. And it's kind of an oxymoron. You can fight like crazy, but boy, you love like crazy yeah. too. And um, Mark was Dana's almost next parent. So when she was growing up, if, if I was, a, you know, if I was busy or something, it was Mark that she went to. So he, it was almost like he had lost his precious one. Um, Tara felt the same way about Laura. And <laughs> Laura would, would just twist her around Tara's finger and, and say, I leap with you. And uh -huh. Tara would say, no, I got to get to sleep. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, love me. And of course, Tara would break down, let her sleep with her. They had such a tight bond. A close family. And it was, and, and Keith was in there too. I, we were just, that's who we were. We didn't do much outside of the family. When someone had a sports event, we went and supported it as a family. So it wasn't just mom and dad that lost their children. It was the whole family that lost out. I know one of the surprise blessings 
uh, through the grieving that I'm sure in many ways is ongoing. Uh, Globe and Mail article, Faith Football Helped Sholigan Family Cope. Tell us what that's about. Here's a, here's a, what, what's the date on this one? This is uh, August 15, 2009. The story continues to be told. We have a significant uh, player here in the middle. I have to do this without crying. <laughs> we, uh, we went through so many difficult times uh, financially. Um, you know, it was capped off with uh, the losing of the girls. And uh, God truly blessed us through all of our children, through, through Mark. Uh, Mark recovered incredibly well. Uh, you know, his face was cut in half. Oh. Um, and basically today, if you look at him, he has a pencil line across his nose because it goes like this right across. And remarkably, the plastic surgeon put him back together again that I didn't even notice a difference. Wow. And, uh, you know, Tara has grown up to be a wonderful young woman. Um, you know, she has two degrees. Uh, and after all the bad things, it was incredible to see, incredible to see how God had blessed our children, mm -hmm. and in that way blessed us. and And one of the blessings was Keith's football career. Defensive lineman with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Yes, he was in that last Grey Cup. He was. Yes, <laughs> and he wasn't the thirteenth. <laughs> Not thirteen. We'll never forget that number. Uh, but it, it says in this article, for the games, my parents would bring Mark to the games. Yeah. Uh, and take him back after. Obviously still recovering, but this was a lift to his spirit in the aftermath. Well, it was a lift to all of our spirits. Uh, Keith was back. I think we had, they had the uh, funeral on, do you remember what day it was? It was a Tuesday, perhaps? Kind of foggy about what day was what. It was either Tuesday or Wednesday. And um, he went back to school the following day and he asked me, he says, yeah, Dad, what are we supposed to, what should I do about football? And, and I said, you know, God wants us to live our lives. And uh, so he went back to football, and it was incredible that they uh, didn't let, the coach didn't let him go back in until just before the, the, the start of, or the end of the first half. And the team was, was having a tough time. I think they were down, and I think Keith came in and made a play, and, and the team rallied and ended up winning the game. In the second half, he played a very excellent game of football. And that uplifted us all. And as soon as we could, uh, and I don't know how long it took, but we used to bundle Mark up in a wheelchair, wrap him up with blankets, and, and we'd wheel him off to the football field. And, and football in football <laughs> in October and in, in November in, in, in uh, Edmonton can be pretty cool. And I remember a couple of those nights being very cold. And, you know, some friends would help us carry him up into the stands and, and we'd sit, you know, get him into a place where he was comfortable and, and uh, we'd watch the game and then we'd take him back to the hospital afterwards. So he continued to be a family that pulled together oh, yeah. yes. through all the difficulties. I want to show a picture of your family today. Um, you have to identify the melody. Tell us. Uh, I know Mark is the one holding the dog. Mark is holding the dog. Your firstborn. That's right. He's the eldest. And then Joanne, his wife, is beside him. And then we'll go back up. There's me. Keith is in the orange. There's our football his guy. arms around his girlfriend, Anna, and myself. Then my daughter, Tara, and her husband, Doug. And then Patrick in the foreground. And, and maybe the next picture is... Um, <laughs> <laughs> this was... Is the best news to date. The preseason game in Calgary. And uh, Keith, proud grandpa, proud daddy Mark, and baby Lee. Your first grandson. Yes. And isn't that a picture? Congratulations. Pat and Melody, thank you for your courage, your faithfulness, and for these words of encouragement to us all. You know, it sounds, it sounds a little trite, it's a little quip, but God will take us through if we can stand the pull. <laughs> Amen. 
uh, what a pull you have had and continue to have. And I just want to say to you, if you're in that place where you're just being pulled and you're not sure you can take any more, you're not sure what, what to do next, would you call the number you see at the bottom of your screen? We would love to pray with you. You've heard from this couple that it was the prayers of others in, in that overwhelm of grief and loss that gave them a physical experience of being carried. Footprints. <laughs> you might want to read that poem again. It's based on real experience and a real confidence that you can have today. Thank you so much, folks. I hope you'll keep in touch with us as these chapters unfold. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having us.